Okay, a lot of people have been asking, uh, we're going to shift the subject because um, a lot of people have been suggesting or posting comments on George Floyd that apparently mm. new evidence was released. I'm not familiar with it, but from the comments, are you familiar with the new evidence that apparently he swallowed drugs? And I'm not sure if it's in this case or another case. Uh, it's a couple of different things on that. One little transition before I forget. It turns out somebody in the White House is following uh, either us or our Cove or my discussion of the Covington case in the Sixth Circuit. Because somebody in the White House finally figured out that Trump can assert the Westfall Act. And so this week in New York, uh, the uh, Attorney General Barr, and he was, by the way, in his quotes at the press conference were almost quotes from my brief, which would actually limit the scope of, which means maybe the Justice Department will join in my brief. We'll find out. I'm going to ask him to. Because he said, look, anytime a, someone is answering questions of the press because of their job, that is c considered immune. Uh, under the law within the scope of the Westfall Act. And he says, so that's why they're stepping in and taking over all the defamation cases against Trump. So all these defamation cases they had these high hopes for are going to go nowhere for, for the ones that allege something that Trump did while he was in office. There's others that allege something while he was on the campaign trail. But for the rest, the Department of Justice is now substituted in under the Westfall Act. And their, uh, Elizabeth Warren apparently clued them in to the utility of it for Trump. But uh, by Attorney General Barr's statements at the press conference, he was quoting my interpretation of the Westfall Act rather than the Sixth Circuits. So I'm hopeful that might be a cue. So even though I'm otherwise quite critical of Attorney General Barr, uh, <laughs> I'll otherwise be very kind to him in, in case they, they join this. Maybe he'll take some of your advice as constructive criticism and not doesn't always personally. <laughs> always, always. Very cool. But um, yes, in Floyd's case, what is there's more evidence of uh, drug use? Now, by the way, this shows you where the case is going too, though, good, bad, and otherwise. So the there was additional autopsy evidence, autopsy evidence that there's there's no evidence that there was any physical harm to his throat from the knee on the back. The second part was the conclusion that just the amount of fentanyl in the system would have killed him, period. So uh, the Chauvin's defense lawyer made a motion to dismiss on grounds that that precluded him from being charged for murder. Judge will, will, will judge will find that the autopsy still provides a basis by which a jury could conclude that it was a combination of the two, not just fentanyl by itself, that killed him. But that will be a question for the jury, ultimately. The other component was that he was taking drugs right when they showed up. There was evidence of this early on. Actually, Alex Jones was one of the people reporting on it. He broke down the tape and showed that it looked like Floyd dropped another bag of drugs right as he was getting picked up so that he was probably doing drugs he had just ingested drugs right before they arrived or right as they arrived. There's additional evidence of that. Uh, the defense team for the police officers wanted to introduce evidence uh, of the, of Floyd's long drug history abuse. Uh, and the judge completely denied it. And so what, what I told people, uh, in fact, somebody was asking me this the other day, what I thought was going to happen in the case. I said, historically in police abuse cases, where there's controversial evidence on potentially even on both sides, but even cases that were really strong abuse cases where the officers walked, it's because they got transfer of venue. So the 41 shots case out of New York where the cops, you know, fired 41 times and killed a guy that was unarmed. They got that case moved from Brooklyn to Albany and they all walked. Uh, Rodney King famously moved from South Central to out in the Valley. And that's where they all walked. Um, and so the, uh, I don't think this judge is going to move venue. I think that the, if the, if the case is tried in Minneapolis, the cops will still be convicted despite this evidence. They might overturn it on appeal a couple of years later. Chauvin has problems anyway. He was doing tax evasion, wasn't filing returns, was pocketing excess cash. So he's got a host of problems. So totally separate from this case, he's going to prison no matter what. But the other officers, the, 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 their defense has got stronger. Um, uh, the, and I, I never particularly liked the charges against them because I thought it was, are, were they supposed to tackle the other officer? Is this a few good men situation where they're supposed to stand up and do something and their failure to do so now is criminal homicide. I thought that was a bit of a reach. Uh, I thought Chauvin deserved to be prosecuted because, uh, it was excessive force, even if it didn't cause death. Well, you that could have it, you know. You know, that, that was, the, I'm, I'm pulling up these comments because th that was the thought experiments I, I always go through is, you know, what, what additional piece of information would I need to have to change the opinion that I've already come to? Um, and, you know, so two things. I, I, from the, the initial autopsy, autopsy, 
there was no indication that he had swallowed bags of drugs. Look, and if 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 the news is that, or if the developments are that he had ingested bags of drugs that were slowly expanding or releasing in his stomach while he's, you know, uh, being having a knee put on his neck. I, I'm not sure that that I would it, it would be closed minded to say that wouldn't change anything. That's sort of like those the, the the mules who have the cocaine break in their stomach and then die. If there was some random contemporaneous thing happening at the same time, you would have to factor in the drugs in their stomach. I this is news to me. I, I don't know why it would oh. not have been disclosed with the previous autopsy though. Well, one other interesting component there is uh, it appears that Floyd was a rat informant because they're asking for all of his informant files. So that may be that, 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 that raises all kinds of interesting questions. Was he Chauvin's informant? Had he informed against Chauvin, given that Chauvin was involved in criminal behavior? Um, it's just, it, I'm just curious where that potentially leads. That may not lead in a way that helps Chauvin. I know uh, the thing you, I, I, I recall you from the beginning, you had, you had mentioned that you, it looked like there was a prior relationship between Chauvin and, uh, and Floyd. Correct. And so the and just his behavior was particularly it, it didn't strike me as abusive cop behavior by itself. It struck me as something else. And if there's a back there, there, there's now evidence that there was definitely a backstory of them getting into fights when they were working private security. But if, if it turns out Floyd was an informant and may have informed at some level against Chauvin or somebody connected that Chauvin was trying to protect, uh, or if they were overlapped in the same circles. So I think Chauvin, if the case is, is tried in Minneapolis, they're going to be so exhausted by everything that's happened, they're going to convict Chauvin no matter what. I think the other officers may walk. There definitely is uh, evidence. A jury could fairly conclude that Floyd would have died anyway, that he did not die because of the police behavior that day. There's evidence they could also conclude that he did die uh, of that because it's always when you have a stress-induced death and the autopsy could not rule out stress as the cause of death or a contributing factor. And clearly uh, being on his back in the way that he was and on his neck in the way that he was for the length of time that he was uh, would cause stress. Uh, the fact that he may have died anyway uh, is a defense to the homicide charges, but it's not a part, but it's not a defense to the excessive force charge. Um, and I, I think a jury could conclude otherwise based on the course of conduct. So the so the I hear people saying, oh, now he's going to I don't think that he's going to walk. Chauvin's there's too much bad history here. Chauvin tried to plea very quickly. I think more bad stuff will come out about Chauvin over time. The judge is signaling that he's going to help secure convictions in the case. I don't like judges to do that, but that's what I think he's heading to do. So I think they will convict Chauvin, but I think the other officers a little bit rough to accuse them of homicide under the circumstances. So I, I think you may see a split verdict. Well, so and I'm pulling this up here. Denny RN says swallowed extended release fentanyl, which was clearly in his tongue. Watch the video for God's sake. Well, I don't know how clearly it was on his tongue because if this is only coming up now, despite. Uh, Reportedly, you know, it's on a body. Some body camera gets it. Okay. The, but I, I have not seen the blown up evidence. I've just heard heard that. But I knew that Jones broke it down in detail. And what he was showing suggested uh, that he got nervous about having drugs when they arrived. And one thing some people do is ingested. That's a bad idea, but the, uh, the, the, that, that's one thing rather than just drop it or try to hide it. So he, that may have been what occurred. It's, it, it's not crystal clear yet, but that's my understanding of what the body camera evidence will show. Um, now if the cops say they knew that, that creates a different set of problems for the cops. So the, like a lot of these defenses are a little bit tricky because if the cops say, Hey, I knew he had all these drug problems. Well, then why did you behave? That puts you on a certain duty like the Rochester cops, that changes how you're supposed to handle the situation. So under their training. Now, by the way, the biggest defense Chauvin has is their training actually required him to use that tactic. That's Not for that length of time, but that that's that's that is his that's his best defense is that the city of Minneapolis had failed to exclude that from their training, which they should have a long time ago. There's, I, yeah. I get the cops who follow me online are going to yell at me again, but uh, the, there's good reason for it, folks. So the, it causes more risk than reward. And that was actually what someone had mentioned, that the, the, the move was not illegal and was part of, uh, yeah. I want to say protocol for lack of a better word. Um, but I still have doubts that that's why Chauvin was doing what he did. That if you look at his behavior, his body language, other things, eight, eight and a half minutes, I don't think he was treating this just like a, uh, oh, I'm just following my guidelines. Uh, I have my hunches. And then 
you know, I said that I said that right out of the gate, and it turned out the guy had 18 prior complaints against him. Has been doing uh, undercover illegal sources of income for three plus years. So to such a degree, he was making so much money undercover that he refused to file tax returns. But by the way, that's a sign of a sophisticated criminal, because you you, you know, given that he has a W two. He was going to get caught easily not filing returns. So why did he not just file anyway? Because he didn't want to lie on those returns because that's a felony, whereas failure to file is just a misdemeanor. So this is a guy that knew what he was doing at a sophisticated level. So the, the, he, I think he was engaged in a wide range of criminal activities outside his police job. Very interesting. Host. It's certainly going to come out during the trial, uh, I, would, I would imagine. Uh, maybe, unless it depends on who it was he was corrupt with. <laughs> Ryu Kiroto says, Ryu Kiroto says, I know Barnes said that the cops who allowed the guy to die from the spit masks are in the wrong, but could it just be he died from excited delirium? So uh, there the autopsy did conclude that there was damage to his th throat and that asphyxi asphyxi asphyxiation was the cause. So that in the, the asphyxiation was so there the autopsy does not support the police. So the autopsy counteracted the excited delirium theory when it said that uh, asphyxiation was a key contributing factor to his death. And the asphyxiation was from them sticking his head into the ground in a ill-equipped skill, uh, quote unquote, spit mask, because it's not a properly, it's not a proper spit mask, what they put on him. Um, and this is my own edification, if you know the, if you know the answer. So the standard people, they have the eggshell defense or the eggshell skull mm -hmm. defense, where you have to take the state of your victim as, as the state when the right. act occurs. Does that apply to police officers as well? Yes, it applies across the board. So you, just because you happen to have a very vulnerable, arguably even more so if they have no, knowledge of it. So if they have knowledge of it, that makes their acts more intentional, right? Like it might be reckless if they don't know about it, reckless homicide as opposed to intentional homicide. But if they know somebody has a certain susceptibility or vulnerability or is in a particular at-risk state and they accelerate the worst consequences of that at-risk state by their own behavior towards him, uh, arguably, that's intentional homicide. I mean, and I'm thinking just to take the uh, uh, the example we had earlier. If someone, if if the cops know someone is a mule and has bags of cocaine in their stomach, and then punches them in the stomach and breaks one of them, that would be, I guess, right. that type of example. Yep. Okay, well, that's very interesting. I mean, I'm going to be following that. It's it's. Um, I wasn't aware of that development. It, it, I, 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 I'm pushing the Floyd case to 2021, so it won't happen before the election. Okay. If, now. Uh, if there's a bunch of like uh, like deals done that don't sound right, that will mean Chauvin was corrupt with the set of people that the attorney general needs to protect. If uh, if they if they go to a full scale public trial, uh, then the Chauvin's corruption it doesn't implicate anyone the attorney general wants to protect. So uh, that'll be the other thing I'd be watching for. Someone's asked Dapper Dave, and there was another person who brought up the comment about his tax returns. If they don't get you on the crime, they'll get you on tax. But he's already why been charged. Would there be why would there be an investigation on his tax? There was no reasonable suspicion that he was being charged for another crime? Oh, clearly they put him under a massive inquiry. But here's my view. That happened very fast. So uh, I can tell you historically they, that doesn't move that fast. So that tells me somebody in the government already knew it, which tells me he was corrupt with a different set of actors. So the uh, And his attempt to plea early struck me that way. In other words... Uh, I, I believe that there's reason to believe, put it this way, that Chauvin's corruption touches politically connected people in the Minnesota, Minneapolis area. Okay, interesting. The, pr the prediction is in, Robert. We'll come back to this uh, at some point in the future. Um, Eric if, he gets, is, if he gets Epstein, then we can count that one in that, that 